that you are here, that your presence is powerful. We thank you, God, that you have a newness for us today, God. We thank you for a new year, 2021, God. We love you. We thank you that you're in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give it up for God. Woo! Awesome. You can go ahead and be seated. Welcome to Passion Life Church. My name is Don Thurber. I'm one of the pastors here. So happy you're here with us this morning. If this is your first time, welcome. Let's give it up for our first time visitors. Awesome. So happy you're here with us this morning. If this is your first time, maybe you've been coming for a while, you've never filled out a connection card. They are at our Welcome Center. We would love to give you a free gift as our thank you for being our guest. So we have a new database, new information. We need your information. If you've moved, we don't have your phone number. We don't have your carrier. Uh, Pastor's going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, but I just want to encourage you to fill out a card as you guys leave. Also, this Saturday, everybody say this Saturday. We have Christmas cleanup. We would love it if you would help us do Christmas cleanup. Yay! Please help. Please come. It's at 9 o'clock this Saturday. It would be so awesome. More hands, the less work. It would be so great. So if you could come this Saturday, that would be awesome. And today marks our eight-year anniversary as a church. Man, eight years ago, Andrew and I were standing in the lobby at River Point Regal Theaters. Um, that's where we launched. And we were like, is anybody going to show up? Um, it was a little scary, but we said yes to Jesus, and thank God we did because you guys are amazing, and God has done a great thing. So uh, happy anniversary, PLC. Um, check out our video.
Hey, welcome to Passionate Life Church and Happy New Year. We are so excited you've been able to join us today. Uh, my name is Matt Brown. I'm the Life Group Director here, and I have just a couple of announcements. First off, we have our informational meeting today after both services in the multi-purpose room. So if you do not know how to do prayer and fasting for our upcoming 21 days of prayer and fasting, you can meet our pastors after both services in the multi-purpose room to just get equipped and have your questions answered. This is just going to be a really great year. We're really excited for what God has for us. So January 11th, our 21 days of prayer and fasting is going to get kicked off. We're going to have some special devotionals to lead you through that. So be looking out for that on our social media platforms. Last but not least, next week after first service, during second service, we're going to have life group leader training upstairs. You can find me up there. Ask any questions you have about what it takes to lead a life group. It is a training, but not a commitment. So if you have any questions, you can email me at mattbrown at passionatelifechurch.com. Now get ready for an awesome message. Good morning. How you guys doing today? Good? Want to wish everybody a happy new year. Come on, we made it out of 2020 alive. Come on. My name is Andrew. I'm the lead pastor for those of you that do not know me. I want to welcome everybody that is watching us online right now. Hey, thank you for staying connected to Passionate Life Church. Uh, here in my hand real quick before we, we get into it today, uh, we have one of these. I want to encourage you to grab one of these. It's uh, our new giving platform, but it also helps us uh, get updated information. Some of you have moved and, and changed your information, your phone number, and so we want to update uh, our, our database. We're, we're transitioning over uh, to a brand new database, and one of the things that we really, really need and really want is your cell phone carrier information uh, so we can text you. Uh, I was joking, <laughs> first service, that we wouldn't abuse it, like text you at 3 o'clock in the morning on Sunday to make sure you get to church, but we might do that. I don't know. It just sounds... We won't do that. Uh, just so we can have quick communication with you, instant communication with you, uh, just reminders of life groups. We're going to have an awesome life group semester uh, coming up. And, and just uh, so we can, if we have to change a, a Sunday service, we can do that quickly. Uh, last year we had a big snowstorm, and so we just did one 930 service. And, and I know many of you are getting off social media more. And so it's just the best way. Some of you don't check your emails. It's just the best way to communicate is we send you a quick text and let you know uh, what is happening. And so that's why we want uh, your cell phone uh, carrier information. So please, I want to encourage you to fill one out. Some of you wait a year before you fill one of these out. Listen, this is your home church. Come on. Even if this is your first week, come on. God has called you here. Just fill one out. Be part of uh, the community. Amen? Awesome. Uh, we are going into a uh, new message a series this week, two-part series called Fasting and, and Prayer. Uh, every uh, year here at Passionate Life in January, we commit 21 days to prayer and fasting. And we just want to put God first in the first of our year uh, so he'll bless the rest of the year. Uh, what fasting is, is fasting is uh, aligning our will with God. It's aligning our will with God's, and uh, we're fasting for a purpose. Uh, we're just not fasting out of religious obligation or anything like that. Uh, we just want to align our will with God's, uh, God's will in, in 2021. Uh, it's going to be the best year of our lives if it's the closest we've ever been to Jesus. Amen. Come on. It can't be a bad year if it's the closest we've ever uh, been to Jesus. And so uh, today we have resources for you. Pastor Don and possibly Pastor Ben uh, will be in the multi-purpose room right after service to answer any questions about prayer and fasting. Uh, I'm encouraging everybody to do uh, some type of Daniel fast, getting rid of meat, doing fruits and vegetables, 
uh, you know, for 21 days. And, and I'm not, you know, some of you are like, yeah, fasting, I'm going to do water for 21 days. Listen, you, you will literally last two hours, okay? And you'll eat a cheeseburger, all right? And so, um, you know, and, and I, what I want you to do, I want you to prepare, and that's what we start January 11th. Uh, I want to give you some time to prepare and pray about what you're going to do. Uh, I'm going to talk more about prayer next week. Um, and, in more detail uh, about praying, but uh, I want to put out a challenge to all of our couples here today uh, that you would, during these 21 days of prayer and fasting, that you would pray 30 minutes a day together. Come on. Some of you are like, Pastor, that is a really long time. Okay, break it up into 15 minutes, two 15-minute sections or three 10-minute sections. I just believe that this is going to be so powerful for uh, our couples to pray together. Man, there's power there. Jesus is there. Uh, you know, there's unity there when we pray uh, together. And so uh, I want to challenge all of our couples to pray 30 minutes a day during uh, our time of prayer and fasting, uh, fasting for uh, a purpose, fasting for uh, a purpose. I've got five things that, that I want to uh, talk about today that we're going to specifically hone in uh, during this time of fasting and, and prayer uh, to help us get all on the same page and praying for the same things. And I just really believe that God put these five things on my heart. And I'll, I'll probably talk in more detail about these as we talk about prayer next week. Uh, the first thing that I want us to focus in on um, in our 21 days of prayer and fasting is praying for uh, our nation. Praying for our nation. How many know our nation needs some prayer, right? And some of you have uh, the idea, some of you have the thought that our nation is too far gone. Listen, it's never too far gone for God. It's never far, too far gone for God. We look in the Old Testament, Israel, you know, Israel did a lot of bad things, and, and they were gone, right? They, they, they went off track really far. And whenever God's people would repent, whenever God's people would fast and pray, God would meet them right where uh, they're at. And I believe God can do that for our nation. Uh, Abraham Lincoln in 1867 called uh, the whole nation to fast and pray. Like, how awesome was that president, right? Like, he called the whole nation four times in 1867. He called the whole nation to prayer and fast. And what happened is that launched our country into 28 years of just uh, insane prosperity. Like, like, this is what, it, it's, out of that fast is what, how we developed into a superpower, okay? And God's just blessing was on our country. Why? Because uh, our president called for uh, us prayer and fasting. Uh, during that time, we bought Alaska from the Russians uh, for $7.2 million. That's about two cents an acre, okay? And, and so that, man, God can just do things when he, his people commit to a, a time and a season of, of prayer and fasting. And man, I just know We've had so many supernatural miracles happen during that time, but all throughout the year, uh, just people are just, man, God just moves in their life because they dedicated those first 21 days or that 21 days in January uh, to, to God. And so we're going to pray for the nation. Number two, we're going to pray for our family. Uh, we're going to pray for our family, and we're going to pray for our marriages. We're going to pray for our kids and our grandkids, and we're, we're going to pray for our cousins and aunt and uncles and grandparents. And, and, and uh, there's this promise in Scripture that uh, the, the blessings of a righteous goes a thousand generations in. And as we pray for our family, we are affecting a thousand... People in our family uh, uh, genealogy will be affected by our prayers during this fast a thousand years in. Like, like this is how powerful prayer is. We're going to talk about this more next week, but this is how powerful our prayers go. There are generational prayers uh, that we're going to be praying over our family. Number three, the third thing uh, I want us to focus in on uh, during the fast is finances and career. Uh, 2020 was hard for a lot of people in, in the financial area and for the career and for work. Some of you lost, lost your jobs. And I just believe that, that God wants to, to give back. I, I believe that God wants to repair some of the damage that happened in 2020. And, and listen, God cares about your money. God cares about your finances. God, God cares about what you do for work. Like he cares about that. And I believe he just wants to, uh, he wants to give back uh, of everything that was lost 
in 2020. And so we're going to lift up our, our finances and career. Number four, uh, we're going to pray for the church. We're, we're going to pray that God does a revival. We're, uh, man, this is something that, that's close to my heart that I've been praying for for a long time. And uh, this 2020 was really hard on the church. Uh, it was really hard. People have left the church, and Barna Group has done studies. And every church in America has lost people and has lost finances, and so it's been a hard year for the church, and so we're going to lift up the church uh, in America, but also here at Passionate Life Church, and that we would see God do something historic, that we would see God do a revival. When I'm talking about revival, I'm talking about people, uh, lost people getting saved. Man, uh, we all have people in our lives that need Jesus, and we've just seen them come to know God, and, and God just brings this hunger into his people, and they just want more of God. And, and, and so, man, we're going to pray for uh, that, that our church experiences a revival. And then number five, overall wisdom and direction. Anybody need some wisdom and direction? Come on, all of us, right? And so, man, just God just pours out when we limit distractions, and, and that's what we do during the fast. We limit social media and certain shows and, and the news, and we just, we just hone in on 21, three weeks, we hone in and focus on God to give us revelation, to give us wisdom and direction. It takes about 20 days uh, to form a habit. It takes about 20 days uh, to form a habit. And I don't know about you, but I've gone off the rails, okay, uh, with my eating, okay? I've just gone, I'm just gonna, uh, I just wanna confess some things this morning. It was either seven or eight days in a row I ate pie or cake. And three of those days was for breakfast, okay? And I began to justify it. That's what we do, right? Justify it because it was apple pie. I'm eating fruit for breakfast, and so it's good for me. And so, man, I don't know about you, but, but I, I want to get my mind, my body, and spirit right going into this new year because it's all connected. It's all connected. And so we encourage everybody to do something with food, something, uh, you know, that, that affects your mind and, and spirit. Uh, going into this new year. It's going to be an awesome, awesome year. Amen? So if you're new to Passionate Life Church, every year uh, I, I get a word for our church that just kind of resonates throughout the whole year. Uh, last year, uh, last year was raising the bar. We were going to raise the bar, and uh, God raised the bar on us, right? We, we had to. You saw in that video, we, we had to reinvent ourselves and how we reached people, how we loved people, how we blessed people, and, and going online church and all of that. And God definitely raised the bar all across America, really, on Christians. And, and, um, and unfortunately, some, some haven't come back to church yet. And, and God just raised the bar on all of our lives spiritually. And so that was the word uh, for, for last year. And so God gave me another word uh, for this year. And so um, today, I, I just want to give you a heads up today. Uh, we're we're going to do an extra song um, in response time today uh, because I really believe that God wants us to focus in on responding today. It's the first Sunday of the year. And, and I really, this week as I was preparing, yesterday I was praying, this morning, we usually do a communion first of every uh, month, and we're not going to do it this morning because I just really believe God has something in our response time for every single person uh, this, this morning. And so I just want to prepare your heart and your mind to respond to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Come on, let's pray, and we'll get into God's Word today. Father, we thank you for this moment. This is your moment. God, we thank you for 2020 and that uh, we're all here. We're all still here, God, and, and we just believe for great things in 2021. Holy Spirit, I just pray you'd open our hearts, you'd open our minds. I bind and rebuke the, the, the spirit of lies, the father of lies right now in Jesus' name. God, we just pray that your truth would reign right now across this place. God, I just pray that you would move me out of the way. God, that you would just speak through me, not my words, but yours, Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. I'm just going to rip it like a Band-Aid, okay? I'm just going to give you the word for the year. Now, sometimes this is like really difficult for me. I stress about it, and I'm just like, God, I need this word, or I need this, this phrase. Uh, this week, it literally happened in about two hours on Monday. God just dropped this word in my heart, and I believe it's the word for us this year, and that word is broken. Broken. 
I had one person first service clap, okay? One. And the reason why, because some of you are like, Pastor, 2020 was broken, okay? Like, we don't need another broken year. I mean, come on, Pastor, like, get a different word. Like, go back this week, redo it. Like, we don't like that word, right? And the reason why we don't like that word is because the context that we associate that word with is when we get broken by the devil. You see, when we get broken by the devil, what comes along with that brokenness is guilt, and shame, and regret, and unforgiveness, and bitterness, and anger, like all of those, because Satan's plan, to, Satan's plan is to destroy us, to steal everything good from us, and so when we're broken by Satan, and we've all been broken by the world, we've all been broken by Satan, what happens is, is we, all of a sudden we start living in guilt, and regret, and shame, and none of those things are from God. And so many of us associate brokenness with with being broken by the devil. Listen, I've been been broken by the devil many, many times. I came out of that type of brokenness. But listen, listen, this is a good thing that God is calling our church to brokenness. This is a good thing because brokenness, when God breaks you, it's something entirely different. And I just believe that this is, God gave me this process this, this week that he wants us to go through as a church. And, and I believe God's going to do some things today. See, when, when we allow God to break us, it, we're, we're taking a position of humility. We're taking a position of humility. We're allowing him to break us. And then what happens is he rescues us. That is the next step. And when we get rescued, in the midst of a rescue is what? Healing takes place. And then what happens after the rescue and the healing is that God brings us into something brand new. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. So if God, listen, listen, if God is asking us as a church to get broken, that means he wants to draw close to us. Come on, God wants to draw close to us this year, but we have to take a broken position. And, and many of you are thinking, oh man, I got to get shattered, I got to get broken, and, and then God's got to take, you know, super glue and try to glue my life. No, 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 no. God's not trying to super glue our lives together. He is a potterer. He's a creator. He wants to create something brand new. But we have to go through the rescuing process. We have to go through this healing process. He says, he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. God is asking us to get broken. Why? Because he wants to rescue. He wants to heal. Because he has something brand new for us. Listen, there's a lot of things that we we picked up in 2020. There's a lot of brokenness that has happened in, in 2020 that we've brought in to 2021, and, and I want it to stop today. I want it to stop today, and I believe the Holy Spirit wants it to stop today, that we get broken before the Lord, and he wants to rescue and heal because he has something brand new for us. So I'm going to give you three examples from my, my life. God has been constantly breaking things off of my life, had a uh, lunch with a friend this week, and there's some things that came out of my mouth, and I'm like, I need to get broken before the Lord. And so God's just not calling all of us, he's calling all of us to get broken, even your, your pastor, okay? Even your pastor to get broken before the Lord, because there's always things that we need to get rescued out of, healing from, So because God's always wanting to do something brand new in us. Okay, so I'm going to give you three examples, so you can start thinking about how uh, God really processes this brokenness to rescue uh, to brand new. Uh, the first thing that when I was broken, I, I came out of this really bad drug lifestyle. And, and listen, I loved drugs, okay? I was dependent on drugs. I couldn't be around people without getting high. I couldn't get, I, you know, I just needed to be wasted. I, I just, uh, I needed it, okay? And so I was addicted to drugs. And some 19 years ago, uh, man, I gave my life to Christ, and, and I said, God, I'm going all in. I, get, I went all in on the world, and I saw what Satan could do for me, and it was complete brokenness, shame, guilt, all of that that comes with it. And so the moment that I said yes to Jesus, Jesus spoke to me. He said, Andrew, if you remain faithful to me, I will bless you beyond your imagination. The most important word in that sentence is faithful. 
We serve a faithful God. It is his very character to be faithful to us. He is a faithful father who will never leave us or forsake us. No matter how we act, he is a faithful God. It's whether or not we're going to be faithful to him. And so God spoke to that, and, and instantaneously, it, it was a miracle. God removed the desire for me to ever do drugs ever again. It, it was supernatural, something that happened to me because I was so dependent on it. God just removed it in an instant. He, he rescued me. He healed me in that, that moment because he wanted to do something brand new in my life. He didn't want me to live any longer addicted to drugs. And so he rescued me instantaneously. He healed me instantaneously so, he could, so I could live in this brand new life. Listen, I believe this. God was moving on first service. God wants to rescue some of you today instantaneously. He wants to heal you today instantaneously. You've been holding on to some things for a really long time, and, and God wants to rescue you today. He wants to heal that today. He wants you to get broken before the Lord, getting humble, rescue and heal, because he has something brand new for us today. And so he supernaturally took the desire from me immediately. The second thing that God dealt with me is he dealt with my sexual sin. I was having sex outside of marriage, and, and God spoke to me. I was living with my girlfriend at the time, um, who who we were separated, we were in different states. The second thing, not, not the 10th or the 11th thing that God dealt with me, it was the second thing. God dealt with my sexual sin second. And he said, you know, that daughter of mine that you're shacking up with, you need to marry her. You need to make it right. Within two months, we were engaged. About three months total, we were married. And I talk to young people all the time. And they're like, oh, I need to have this career. I need to have this job. Listen, if it's the right person, it doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter what your life looks like. If God is calling you to get married to that person, then you should get married to that person, right? Like if God's called you to, you know, we, we have all of these excuses. Listen, I had a, a, a plan, okay? I needed to be 28 and I needed to be driving a BMW before I got married, okay? None of that happened. I didn't have a job, had no money, and God's like, you make it right with my daughter and I'll make it right with you. Come on, I'm preaching good today. And, and listen, script, this is, scripture tells us there's no sin like sexual sin that affects our spirit because it's two people united into one. Two people become one person. There's a, there's a soul, the two souls come together. And so listen, young person, do not give your purity away. I know the world has this pressure and, and they've watered down sex to something more than just an act. Listen, it, it's not to God. It's something spiritual that happens. You do not give your virginity away. You don't give your purity away. It is something very special to God something special that you can give to your spouse. And listen, I know the world has the opposite view of that, but God doesn't. It'll save you so much heartache and pain in the future. You save it the way God intended it. And so he dealt, me, he dealt with me about three months in to my sexual sin. And, and so there's a second thing that I had to process through that God had to rescue me out of, and he had to heal me from. Now, the third one took a lot longer, and sometimes this is what God does. It, sometimes the, the rescue and the healing process takes longer, depending on what, what it is that you're struggling with. For me, it was money. I struggled with money. I loved money. I didn't have money, but I wanted more money. <laughs> I have it, but I wanted it, right? I really wanted it, and, and I just loved it. And, and Jesus is very clear that money, money is very powerful in our lives to the point where it can become a God. And Jesus says you can't serve both because you'll love one and hate the other. You, you can't serve both God and money. And so, embarrassingly, first year of our marriage, uh, I'm struggling to get a job, we're struggling with finances, and my new wife comes home, my new wife 
comes home and I'm in the fetal position, weeping into the carpet in our one bedroom home. She comes home and she's like, hi, you know, who did I marry, right? Like, and uh, I was just like, just broken before the Lord. And I said, God, I, I said, Don, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm giving up the control of money. I'm giving up the love of money. I can't do this anymore. We're just going to give it to to God. And so we began to tithe. We began to put the first 10% of everything we made, we, we gave it to God. We just, man, we're, we're just going to give it to God. And listen, not that God needs your money. Okay, listen to me. God doesn't need our money. Uh, what he needs is our heart. And when we put God first in our finances, we're, we're telling God, listen, every month that I tithe, I'm becoming broken before the Lord, right? I'm saying, God, you, you, you own everything, even my money. I don't want money uh, to control my life. And so when we give, we're, we're saying, God, I, I want to be broken of this. And money is so powerful. Man, we have to do it all the time, right? We have to put God, God first and and. and God began to, to move in our lives financially. He began to move in our lives financially. And listen, this was a 10-year period for us, for me specifically, because God wanted to see if I was going to be faithful with the little. He wanted to see if I was going to be faithful with the little, if I was going to be consistent with giving to God and putting him first. And so it was about 10 years of being faithful with the little that God gave us before he brought us into the brand new. The rescue and the healing process took about 10 years before we stepped into brand new and stewarding the whole church's finances. God wanted to make sure I could steward my own finances before stewarding a whole church's finances. And let me tell you, as your pastor, I take finances very, very seriously. And if you ask our staff, they would say that pastor's very cheap. That's what they would say. And I would say, I'm just a good steward. Because I know when I stand before God, I, God is going to hold me accountable for the money that was brought into this storehouse and how we used it. And this, listen, that's why we, we don't have a $500,000 lighting system and like other churches do it. That's fine. That's their vision. Listen, I paid $300 for these babies on Amazon and I hung them myself. It gets the job done. Because I, I want us to focus on, on, on man, reaching more people. And, and man, this year we're, we're, we're going to Africa. And, and man, I want to go to Ukraine. I just want to do more things for God. Because when we stand before God, he's going to ask us, what would you do with the resources that I gave you? I want to hear him say, good and faithful servant. And that's why, man, it's so important that we put God first in our Finances. Not that God needs our money, but He wants our heart. So the ten-year period of healing and rescue and being faithful that God put me through before the brand new. So, as we think about this today, listen. There's some things that God wants to do in our lives that are brand new. That he wants to do in our lives instantaneously. He wants to rescue and heal instantly. Listen, today, there are things, if you will let God in, he will rescue and heal you today. So, okay, how do I know that I've got some areas in my life that I need to get broken before the Lord? How do I know that there's some things in my life that God needs to heal and rescue? Okay, how do we know? We know by when you get triggered by things and it just sets you off. Like you'll be doing good for, for a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, and then all of a sudden you get triggered by something. Whether it's the in-laws, whether it's your parents, whether it's your cousin, who, you know, whatever it is, maybe it's a bill that comes in the mail or, or, or something that somebody says, maybe it's a, a TV show, maybe somebody cuts you off in traffic and you get triggered. And all of a sudden you get angry 
you get frustrated, resentment starts to come up, you start to feel bitter and anger in your heart. And then all of a sudden you want to escape. You get to, all of a sudden you're into depression and oppression and, and all these negative thoughts start flooding into your, your hearts and your minds and some of you to the point, listen, I'm, I'm going to declare this right now because I believe somebody needs to hear this. This year, you're not going to think about killing yourself. This is going to be the year. Man, it's been a decade for somebody in here. You've thought about killing yourself every single year. This is going to be the year you don't think about it because you're going to let God rescue you. You're going to let God heal you right now in this moment. I didn't say that first service, so it's for somebody here. You get, we get triggered and all, man, and then we go back to our habitual habits. We just, we just want to escape. We, and then all of a sudden, we start drinking again, and we, we, we start dabbling in drugs again, and just all of a sudden, we just, uh, things start to snowball, and we're, we're just like, man, how did I get here? It's because we were triggered by something that we've never been broken before, before the Lord, and we've never allowed him to rescue and heal us. So let this be a different year. Come on, let, let this be a different year where you experience the healing and rescue of God because he has brand new for us. Let's continue. First Peter. First Peter 2, 6 and 7. He's quoting the psalmist here. He says, I'm placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem. And he's talking about Jesus, chosen for great honor. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. I mean, think about that. You will never be disgraced following Jesus. You will, he will never disgrace you. Yes, you who trust in him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Let's, let's continue. He is the stone that makes people stumble. The rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Listen, there's nobody like Jesus. Any other religion in all of the world, Jesus separates us as Christians. Nobody sends their only begotten son to die for people on a cross and then conquers death three days later, and then promises eternity to everybody that follows him. Like, there's just nobody like Jesus in, in all, all of the world, and that's why he makes some people stumble and fall, because everything at the center of what we do here at Passionate Life Church is Jesus. The way we live our life is all about Jesus. The way we live and serve and give, it's all about Jesus. And that's why he makes some people stumble and fall, because they just can't get Ask Jesus. They, they can't accept what Jesus did for us. It's all about Jesus. This fast that we're going on is all about Jesus. It's not about religious obligation. It's about getting closer to Jesus and allowing him to break some areas in our life that need to be broken. I want you guys to internalize this next scripture, okay? This is God speaking to you, all right? But you are not like that. Come on, receive that today. For you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. This is what Jesus has done for us. Let's continue. Once you had no identity as a people. Come on, I can relate to that passage. I had no identity before Jesus. I was trying to identify in all types of groups and things, and Jesus gives us identity. Now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very soul. I think we're going to talk more about that in detail next week, but Peter's saying, look, I need to remind you, this isn't our final destination, okay? Man, our final destination is with Jesus forever, 
for all eternity. That well, These are just temporary bodies. We're, we're a temporary residence. And so we need to live differently, right? We need to live differently. And so what we do when we fast and pray is we declare war against the worldly desires that are attacking our very soul. That's what happens when we fast and pray. Instead of being defensive, all of a sudden we get on the offensive and now we attack uh, the, the, the devil and his, de- his demons that are attacking us and we get offensive and we, we begin to, to win the victories that God has called us to win in our lives. Why? Because we're declaring war on the things that attack our soul. And we're all attacked all the time. Every single day. And that's why when we step into a season of fasting, we, we encourage to limit entertainment and, and the news and just, just really focus in on to what God has in store for us. I did this first service, and I'm going to do it again because I, I feel Jesus here, and I feel that we need to go this way. I had another passage of Scripture I was going to read, but I'm not going to read it. I really want us to respond to what God has been speaking to us. Listen, this is a good thing that God wants us to get broken. Listen, there's some things that some of you have held on to, addictions, habits, uh, failed marriages. Uh, There's been things, maybe you were abused as a kid. Uh, There's some things that you were holding on to. Maybe you have some adult children that don't don't serve the Lord and you just that kind of weighs you, you down through life. Listen, God, get broken today. Get broken today. Let God rescue you in that thing that triggers you. You could be having a good day. All of a sudden, boom, you're depressed. All of a sudden, boom, you, you start thinking about drinking and, and, and leaving your spouse. Man, listen to me. Listen to me. Man, this is a good thing to get broken before. He wants to rescue you. He wants to heal you. He doesn't want you to think the way you've been thinking. He doesn't want you to act. He's got freedom for us. He's got something brand new. And so we're extending response time this morning. One song. He said, your pastor, I want you to respond. I don't want you to go into this new year the same way you came into 2020. And the only way we do that is we, get, we humble ourselves before the Lord. Come on, let's pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Maybe you say today, Pastor, the first thing I need to do is say yes to Jesus. Maybe this year has just consumed you. You just need to recommit your life to Jesus today. And I, I'm asking if you're, you're online watching us, please pray with us today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is your personal declaration of faith that you're going to follow Jesus this year. If that's you, just slip up a hand. I just want to pray with you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. And I would just ask that everybody in this place, we, we just repeat this prayer as we help those making the greatest decision of their life today. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I ask this morning that you would forgive me of all my sins, that you would come into my life and be my Lord and King. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on. Let's give them a hand clap today. Heaven is rejoicing. We now are going to transition into our response time. Uh, We've got three stations that make it really easy for you to respond. The first station is the station of the cross. Uh, We have pieces of paper up here that you can write anything down. There's just something powerful and symbolic When you nail something to the cross, Jesus said it is finished on the cross. And so I want to encourage you, if there's something that you need to be finished, I want to encourage you to do that today. The second station is the station of the altar. If you just want to get alone with God and just pray, uh, man, it's just an awesome time to just come to the altar and seek God. And then uh, we have prayer partners over to my left, your right, called the Prayer Cove. We have two separate rooms back here because we care about what you're going through. We want to... We want to pray the power and the presence into your situation. Now listen to me. Satan's already been speaking to many of you here today, saying you don't need to get prayer. Listen, I've been there. No, 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 you don't need to get prayer today. It'll be fine. It'll just fix itself. No, it won't. 
it won't just fix itself. You, you don't have enough self-control or self-discipline to self-discipline this thing away. It's only the hand of God can rescue you from that thing that keeps you keep tripping over, over and over and over again. You think you're good, but you're not good. Satan's just gone silent for a little while because he's going to attack you later when you're most susceptible. Listen, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day that we get rescued. Today's the day that we receive our healing. And there's just something powerful about having someone pray with you and, and agreeing with you today. Come on. Today's the day we get rescued by God. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We'll pray. And then we'll worship and respond to the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you that you're here. I thank you for every person that's in this room today. It was on purpose, God, that you placed them here. Because you want them to get broken today. Because you want to rescue them. You want to heal them. There's, there's some people here today, decades. It's been decades and God wants to rescue you instantaneously this morning from that thing because he loves you and he has mercy for you and he doesn't want you to live that way any longer. God, we just open our hearts, open our minds this morning to receive. God, I just bind and rebuke the spirit of pride that stops people, that stops us from moving God to you. Holy Spirit, we just take a humble position this morning. We say, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher. With power to save, with power to save. You keep hope alive, you keep hope alive, from the beginning to end, your word never fails, you keep hope alive, because you are alive, Jesus, you are alive.
the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope.
21, Father, we stand in your promises. What do you say, God? Father, we know that you have something good. Your plans are great. Your plans are good. And we stand in your promises. Father, I pray that we can draw near and closer to you this year. As we fast and pray next week, Father, I pray that our hearts will be open to receive what you have for us this year. God, we declare victory. We declare breakthroughs. God, we declare that you will move every mountain that is in front of us, God. And we declare that in your mighty name, Jesus. We love you. We praise your name. And we thank you in your name. Amen and amen. Come on, church. Give a shout of praise this morning. Woo! We continue to worship. Now it's with our giving. As you exit the doors outside in the lobby, the boxes where you can give your tithes. Thank you so much for staying connected to Passionate Life Church. If you'd like more information, you can email us at passionatelifechurch at gmail.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, or share this with a friend. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.